Good morning, friends. Welcome to the worship service at Rankin Presbyterian Church in Brush, Colorado, and United Presbyterian Church in Fort Morton, Colorado. We're glad you joined us. I have an announcement that this uh, week we will be putting together the Christmas Memories booklet. If you have not had a chance to send in your Christmas memories, please do so today or tomorrow. We're hoping to start putting in together on Tuesday and Wednesday of this next week. So send that in. You can send it either to my email or send it to Louise's email. Uh, if you need that address, it is in the uh, blast that is sent out each week so that you'll be able to reply to there. Also, a special thank you to everybody who helped participate in our giving trees in both Brush and Fort Morgan. Many presents were bought and many will be distributed. So we thank you all for sharing your love and sharing what the Lord has given to you. Come, let us worship the Lord. We light this candle as a sign of the coming light of Christ, as the Lord has promised in days to come. The nations shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. The wolf shall dwell with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid. The calf and the lion and the fatling together, and the little child shall lead them. Let us walk in the light of the Lord. Let us pray together. Loving God, you sent your prophet John to prepare your way among us to call us to repentance and make our pathway straight. Strengthen us to live lives of steadfast love and faithfulness as we await the Messiah's return, that all may see your reign of peace through your just and gracious rule. Amen. Remember that our Lord Jesus can sympathize with us in our weaknesses, since in every respect he was tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us then with boldness approach the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in a time of need. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Faithful God, we confess that we have not led lives of holiness. We suffer from impatience, apathy, and greed. We have not been at peace. We repent of these offenses and turn to you in love. Forgive our iniquity and pardon our sins that we may walk in righteousness to the glory of your name. Let us continue in silent confession. people say, Amen. Brothers and sisters, by the mercy of Christ, your sins are forgiven, for salvation is at hand for all who turn to God. Thanks be to God. And now may the peace of Christ be with you. Bethlehem lay in darkness that night so long ago. The shepherds out on the hills had settled in. 
and all was quiet, except for the crackling of the dying embers of a campfire and the rustling of a few restless lambs. But heaven had a surprise in store. Midnight turned bright with the glory of the angelic host, sharing good news of great joy, a love song that fell across the hillside like a blanket of peace, a love song the shepherds could hear the rest of their lives. Hey. 
It Came Upon a Midnight Clear is one of my favorite Christmas carols. My mind can see the shepherds in the hills and the people in the villages that are bedded down for the night. A sky that is filled with many stars and a full moon, with maybe a wisp of a cloud in its shadow. Suddenly, out of nowhere, the heavens erupt with a blinding light, the light so sharp. It pierces the eyes so that people must look away and shield their brow. Then the voice of the angels from the realm of glory bursts forth into song so loud that it rattles your chest. They sing of the Messiah's birth and invite literally the whole world to come and worship the newborn king. The scene has moved from one of peaceful bliss to utter chaos. Yet it is the greatest story ever told. The gift of God incarnate in the child Jesus, born to a young girl and a carpenter father. A night that will never be forgotten. When we think of peace, we often want something to be peaceful. Yet peace itself is very different. It is active, not passive. Peace is something to work for, not to relish and sleep to. The second week of Advent, we look at the candle called Peace. And it brings with it a story from the Gospel of Mark about change, which is what peace requires. Listen to the word of the Lord from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verses 1 through 8. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, 
I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. And he proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The story of John the Baptist is not one we associate with the beautiful scenes of a midnight clear and angels singing. As one of my friends recently said, John the Baptist is no Santa Claus in the mall for children to see. No, this is the beginning of the good news, or gospel, the story that leads to an ugly, ugly death, but a beautiful resurrection. This is a story that is meant to shake things up. When we think about the gospel, we like to put our own twist on it a little just like the people in the first century did. In Jesus' day, there was the gospel or the truth of Rome. You had to pay your taxes. You had to be subservient to the army as they occupied your home. There was also the gospel of the temple and the Jewish traditions. Days to work and days to fast. Rituals that needed tending to and sacrifices to be made. And today, we have several Gospels as well. Andrew Foster Connor writes in Connections, a lectionary commentary for preaching and worship. There is the prosperity gospel that promises material blessings as a sign of God's faithfulness. There's the consumer gospel that promises healing and wholeness through shopping, consumption, and the accumulation of things. And then there's the feel-good gospel that promises escape from the pressures of the contemporary world through drugs, alcohol, sports, or media and entertainment. Then we have the gospel that John the Baptist foretells. A story in which someone is going to baptize not with water like he does, but with the Holy Spirit. John was weird. He lived in the wilderness, and he could have lived in the temple. His father was a priest from the line of Aaron, and that rite is passed down from son to son. Yet John heard the voice of God and did not follow the gospel of the temple. He followed the gospel that came from the Prince of Peace. He dressed like the prophet Elijah and told people to get their act together and stop being filled with sin. He washed them in the river that Elijah parted with his cloak and that Moses parted with his staff. He told the people to turn their lives around or to repent, which is a 180 degree turn in the direction you were going. The gospel of Jesus calls the people into a wilderness as well. It calls people into a new world in which there is a Savior that redeems the entire world. The people came out of the temple to repent and to meet this Messiah, the Savior of the world. Today, we can't go into the temple because of COVID. But the Messiah is not in the temple. The Messiah is in us. We are baptized with the same Holy Spirit that John said Jesus would baptize us with. The grace that extends to us through the Son, Jesus, brings us peace. The peace came to us freely. 
Yet sometimes we don't offer the same to our neighbors. Sometimes we withhold grace and don't even know it. When we come to the font for baptism or to the table for communion, we cannot imagine holding that from others. Yet in the real world, when we sometimes fall into the traps of other gospels, we don't want our tax dollars going to offer help. We say to ourselves, I have enough, why don't they? Are they being sinful and God has not blessed them enough? Or when people are seeking a safer life for their children, free from gangs and drug cartels and corrupt government, we block their path. We say they will take away our right to earn a living or are seeking nothing but handouts, all while we want to feel good about ourselves and donate money to the food banks in our communities. Yes, peace is something that we must work for and not hope for or wish it will just show up someday. Peace comes through reconciliation with our families and our neighbors. I ask you, who do you see as worthy citizens of the kingdom of heaven? Then may we welcome them in our midst. May we be the active agents for peace and reconciliation. Friends, we have come to the time in our worship service in which we bring forth our tithes and our offering. The Lord will give what is good, and our land will yield its increase. May your righteousness go before God and prepare a pathway for the Lord. Let us offer our lives and labor to God and fulfill our vows to the Most High. You may send your checks into either church and you may also give online at the Fort Morgan Church. Also, we are still in dire need of help for the community covered in brush and rising up in Fort Morgan. If you would like to donate there as well, you may send your checks to either church. And in the memo line, just write community covered or rising up. Will you please join with me in the prayer of dedication? Lord, we give you thanks that in the coming of Christ, your steadfast love and faithfulness have met, and your righteousness and peace have kissed. May the gifts we offer this day lift up those in need and prepare the way of your salvation. Amen. This is the first Sunday of the month, and we celebrate the sacrament of communion on this day. So if you don't have some bread and some drink with you, go ahead and pause the video at this moment and do so. If you already have it with you, let us continue into our service of communion. In the depths of your spirits, you are crying out, come the long expected Jesus. This table has been laid out for you. For those who sing, born to set your people free and desire to be set free, the table of the Lord has a place for you. If your heart aches to be released from fear and sin, receive the bread of heaven and the cup of salvation. Those who find their rest in Jesus Christ are welcome here. The feast of communion is prepared for you. Come, taste and see that the Lord is good. Will you please join with me in the great thanksgiving? God be with you and also with you. Let us open our hearts. We open them to our God. Let us give thanks to the Holy One, our God. It is right to lift up thanks and praise. Great Deliverer, how wondrous are your deeds. You created the world and all that is in it. With a mighty arm, you parted the waters and led your people into liberation. When we were in exile, you gathered us up in your bosom and led us home like a mother sheep. When we were mistreating our own, 
You sent prophets to set us right. You pulled down the arrogant and lifted up the weak. And when the time was right, you sent Jesus to set us free. Now send us again your life-giving spirit and recharge your promise within us. For we are eagerly awaiting our Savior to come again from heaven. And we say, holy, 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 God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of our God. Hosanna in the highest. So with gratitude and expectation, we remember that Jesus took the bread, blessed, broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body broken for you. And we also remember that he took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant that's poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Now as we wait for him to come again, O oh God, stir up your power and restore us by sending your Holy Spirit to infuse us with hope in the great mystery of our faith. As we say, Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Let us offer to God our prayers that are on our hearts this day. All glory and honor are yours, eternal God, through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Hear us as we unite our voices and pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, as we have gathered today to celebrate this meal, we ask that you would share this meal with those brothers and sisters who are near and far, remembering them in your hearts, knowing that through peace, we are all reconciled to God. Let us share the gifts that the Lord has prepared for us. Let us join together in the prayer after communion. God of grace, you renew us at your table with the bread of life. May this food strengthen us in love and help us to serve you in each other. Amen.
receive the benediction. May faithfulness spring up from the ground and righteousness look down from heaven as you walk in the way of peace. And may the blessing of God, eternal majesty, living word, and holy comforter be with you now and always. Amen.